networking, meaningful connections, following your gut, taking chances, apps, underestimating the underdogs, and tiny umbrellas. I sit down with the ever-engaging James Chapman to talk about this and more. I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and love to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. Thank you so much for joining me today, James. I'm so excited for our conversation. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me. First off, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and share space and uh, excited for us to just um, talk shop and uh, experiences as as we're doing a little bit before we... uh, before we went officially online here, but uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. It's cool. I know we were joking that I should have hit record right away because we had a pretty good conversation beforehand. But I yeah. I had said that I had been kind of stalking you up to this point, so I <laughs> sort of feel like I have a little bit more of a background. But for for those who weren't stalking you like I was, give them a little <laughs> bit of background of sort of what your life was like up until now. Yeah, I grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, born and raised. Um, we grew up. Uh, we bounced around actually. So I was going to name some neighborhoods that none of your audience would recognize anyway, but just know we bounced around a lot growing up. Uh, and a lot of the, the people that I admire that were kind of, um, entrepreneurs out of necessity as, as we were alluding to earlier. Um, I looked up to them and, and I realized that, um, we didn't have everything, but it felt like we had enough. And, I was very fascinated about how everybody was always doing something, right? Like my cousin, she did hair and my other cousin, he cut hair and my mom ran numbers and my uncle sold weed and like just all, all these different little forms of, of micro entrepreneurship. My, my aunt, she was the candy lady. So she would like sell candy, you know, to the kids in the neighborhood. She would go to Sam's Club or whatever, buy it in bulk and, and, and sell candy out of her house. So like, I don't know, that's the environment that I that I grew up around, right? Just like watching people with all these little side hustles trying to make ends meet. Uh, and it was it was very intriguing to me as a, as a child um, growing up. And I, I attached myself to basketball. So I grew up playing basketball, I've been playing since I was three, played college. Um, tried my hand at the NBA, um, got cut uh, during training camp at the NBA Development League. I think it's called the G League now, but it was called the D League back then. Um, played in Mexico for a little while. Uh, I played a season in Mexico. And then uh, once my hoop dreams kind of deflated, I moved back home to Chattanooga and, and started started working. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pause there in case you have questions around any of that stuff. no no keep going this yeah, is very interesting yeah. cool. so um so i moved back home and i started working in workforce development uh just like helping people be better equipped for finding work and i uh, did that for a number of years uh climbed the ladder pretty quick wanted to get out and uh tried my hand at a mobile oil change business of all things i've never changed all the day in my life uh, but I used to go over my oil changes. So I was like, somebody would probably use this. I would. Right. And, um, I launched it and it started to do well, not as well for individuals, more for like fleets. So like if a business had a fleet of vehicles, like restoration vehicles or something like that, they would call us out to knock out their entire fleet and do their oil changes for them. So I don't have to drive the cars one by one. Uh, and what happened was the, the folks in, Chattanooga started reaching out, asking for help around getting their business started uh, because they looked at me like, like, especially like the people that I grew up with, right? They were like, wait a minute, you're just this 
snot nosed kid used to run around the projects, freaking like, you know, playing basketball. And now that that's over with, you're, you're, you have a business, like, and this is going pretty good. Like, how did you, how are you doing this? Right. And so people, people have always felt very comfortable just reaching out to me. And so, uh, which I like that. I want to always be approachable regardless of how far I go in business. And uh, ended up starting a co-working space for side hustlers, right? So remember, side hustlers, is all, I've always been around them. And so the space was open from 6 p.m. to midnight because usually you're working on your side hustle at night if you're trying to go legitimate, right? You're working at five, et cetera. And um, the spot was called Workaholics. And like, what, what better name, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw you grinning when I told you the name and it was, um, it was cool. I, I was running it and then a breakthrough happened is what I would, what I would call it is I got a call man about moving to Detroit of all places to go and work with Dan Gilbert, who is 16th or 17th richest person in America, um, founder of, um, Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. He owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. And when he asked me to move up, he wanted an entrepreneur who was helping entrepreneurs to reshape and roll out programming in the city of Detroit. And so uh, after a few visits, uh, I realized I had the opportunity to, one, help people who look like me uh, be able to um, gain access to opportunities and founder-friendly capital specifically for them to be able to grow and scale their businesses. And then I had an ability just to learn a lot. Like, I want to own my own NBA team one day, right? And so, like, here's a guy who owns the team with my favorite player on payroll, LeBron James at the time, right? And so, like, I don't know. Can I curse on your podcast or no? Well, I'll, say sure. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, shoot. <laughs> um, like, shoot, why, why wouldn't I take that opportunity, right? And the listeners know what I, what I was really thinking, but it was almost like a no-brainer. And so I, I, I went, um, from that work, I ended up building a $1.2 million annual pitch competition called Detroit Demo Day, um, where companies can receive their share of a million bucks, anywhere between fifty dollars and $300,000 to scale their enterprises. And um, three years into it, out of all the stuff I learned and all the things that I built, I quit. Uh, and the reason why I quit is because I couldn't stop thinking about workaholics of all things. And the question that people would always ask me is, chap, who's in the space right now? Who's going to be at the space tonight? Or can you help me get connected to somebody that does this or that? So like all these side hustlers, man, they, they really like the space, but more so than that, they were looking for opportunities to connect with one another. And I started questioning, could technology solve this? Could technology allow us to build community hyper-locally and make meaningful connections with one another? And that's when I decided to launch Plain Sight. Um, and that kind of brings you up to speed to, to where I am now, the founder CEO of Plain Sight, um, a social platform that allows you to make meaningful connections with people um, virtually or remote. And uh, yeah. So when you, you know, <clears throat> I'm sure you probably like most people, when you, when you decided to leave, did you get a lot of flack on that of people going, what are you doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think um, the most was from Dan, right? Like, he's thinking in his head, like, dude, you got it made. Like, you, you give away a million dollars every year. Everybody loves the program. People love you for giving them a billion dollars every year. Um, and, you know, I like you. We're, 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 we got a good thing going on here. Like, what what's up? And so... I just told him, I said, man, I got a problem I can't stop thinking about. Uh, I wake up all the time thinking about th this problem. And so the way I, I pitched it to Dan, I said, an angel investor and a startup founder walk into a coffee shop. He's like, I like this. It sounds like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so he, you know, he, like, he was not, he was not, you know, so he was like, all right. He's like, I like this. It sounds like a joke. I won't go, go into details because if we're talking about cursing, Dan curses a lot. I, I, <laughs> maybe Dan ain't here. So I shouldn't say it. Anyway. Um, and so I said, man, they stay the same amount of time. They leave at the same time. They compliment each other on each other's glasses on the way out and never have a meaningful conversation. And then he paused. He said, I bet you that happens all the time. And I haven't heard an idea that I like in a really long time. I really like this idea. And I want to invest. 
Uh, so what 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 ended up happening was those people who were kind of looking at me crazy once then decided to invest. They were like, oh, okay, well now we get it. You know, like, yeah, <laughs> you got Dan Gilbert wanted to invest in, in, into your into your thing, and I had already had a couple other people who committed before Dan, but uh, and I didn't expect that. I just wanted his his blessing, you know, to leave, and um, so that that's kind of how that how that played out. What once people heard that he was putting money in, it, it made a little bit more sense for them. Yeah, then they then they could connect the dots that you had already connected. Connect. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So that's kind of how that played out. So tell us a little bit more about like your idea around, you know, we touched briefly on it, but let's talk a little bit more about your idea around this component that's, you know, that's missing, this networking component that's missing with people. I think that I mean, if you look at the stats, right? Um, I think it's like um 85% of all jobs are filled through networking, something like that. And, you know, you hear the cliche comment all the time. Your network is your yeah. network, yeah. right? It's Everybody's all in who you know. <laughs> it's all about, it's not who you know, and not what you know, right? So it's like no, no shock or surprise, nothing groundbreaking really about what we're doing. But how do you grow your network organically? How do you actually meet people? What if you're introverted? Um, what if you don't have access to the right rooms or the right connections? Um, what if you don't know Dan Gilbert? Um, that's what I'm trying to solve is, is that process, the process of actually growing your network so that you can do amazing things because people are brilliant. There are so many ideas that I feel like have never been born and may never be born because they just can't get connected to the right people who can tell them the hows, the wins, the whys, collab with them, um, build partnerships with them. And so that's really what, what I'm after. And I, I think that I look at my career and realize that my career is only where it is because of the meaningful connections I've been able to make along the way. And so I, I want everybody to have equal access and, and opportunity. So let's, let's put all of these, what we call go-getters, people who are looking to grow their networks, um, let's put them all on the app and let's try to have them connect with one another and see what happens. Um, so that's the, that's the mission. And so when, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, that person was in the right place at the right time. <laughs> um, and, and I know I've he heard that, you know, through my career a lot, you know, well, you just, you just happen to be in the right place. And I'm thinking, man, I hustled to get to that place though. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't just happenstance. Yeah. Um, so tell me your thoughts on that and, and, and on people, you know, using yeah. the, well, you were lucky. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe in luck. Um, I believe in positioning. I believe that you can position yourself uh, for good things to happen to you. And that's where the hustle comes in. You can either look at your situation and say, damn, my, situ dang, my situation sucks. And I wish it were different. Or you could just put yourself out there and, and find opportunities and find ways to, even if they're not, exactly how you want them to look because there are going to be very humble beginnings right but it's that process of just continuing to trying to put yourself out there i call it brick by brick and that hustle mentality that eventually it will come and really what we're doing is trying to make it easier for those people who already have that hustle who already have that that urge to put themselves out there and to make these connections to make it easier for them. Um, you, you, you talked about being at the right place at the right time. Internally, we say, we, we try to make sure that you're at the right place at the right time on purpose. Right. We're trying to, we're trying to commercialize serendipity, right? That, that these serendipitous moments that end up changing, you know, our trajectories, how can we, you know, put that into a process and into a product and package it? Um, so we'll see what happens. And I love that because I think it's so true. Like there's so many times where people, you, you know, I go, well, there was, you know, whatever, there was 500 people in the room. The only difference between you and the other person is that they walked up to the front of the room Yeah, I mean, they yeah. just took the plunge, right? They just, they asked a, a question or, and the ones yeah. that I always think are those people that came to me and asked me a question that wasn't the normal 
you know, right. question that wasn't the, you know, how does it feel to be successful or how does it feel <laughs> to be this? Or it's the ones that will, you know, yeah. that have picked up on something different, something obscure. And then I'm like, Ooh, you were really listening. Like yeah. those are the ones that I'm like, I want to talk to you because yeah. Yeah. it's not the standard, you know? Yeah. I, and I think that that whole process has like a negative connotation to it. Networking has like a negative mm -hmm. feel or vibe to it, you know? I, I think it can be salesy sometimes. It can be a bit aggressive, depending. Um, it can even feel like a waste of time sometimes, right? Like you're in a room of 500 people like you just described. And you're going to be there for, at this, let's call it a mixer. You're going to be at the mixer 45 minutes. You're going to have two drinks. You're going to talk to three people, right? And you're going to leave. Of those three people that you're gonna talk to in that room of 500, what are the chances that those three people are, are gonna, you know, be a meaningful connection for you? And so you, it's really playing the odds, you know, and, 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 and striking luck. Um, and I think that's just a broken process. Yeah. And we really wanna do something about that process so that the, the hustlers who wanna do it with intention can have the ability to, to do so. Um, because either way, you got to put yourself out there. You got to get creative. You got to, you know, be assertive, um, because those are the ones that get results, but the odds of it are, are just like, you're at a networking event of 500 people, the odds of walking away with solid connections. It's just so slim. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think people get that, that idea of like, you almost become like a business card collector at networking events, like just how <laughs> many cards you can get. And I remember once being at an event and I was watching this guy kind of working the room, I guess, for lack of a better definition Sorry. of it. Whoa. And I saw him putting like some business cards in his left pocket and some business cards in his right pocket. And I was like, so then I just, I decided, and usually I'm not usually like, I'm the one who will like, if someone's sitting at a table, that's the person I want to go and talk to. Like, I really like the ones that seem a little bit more introverted. Okay. And I remember going up to him and saying, what's the deal with the left pocket and the right pocket? And he was like, he it, oh yeah. my God, right? Like he was like, oh, like I had that He's look exposed. of like He's being so caught, yeah. right? Yeah. But it was funny because he said, you know, when I talk to people, the ones that I want to connect with go in my right pocket. And the ones that I'm just kind of collecting the cards from, they go in my left pocket. And then when I get back to the hotel room, I kind of, or, you know, if I have a few minutes, I'll write a note on the back of their business card that will remind me of a conversation we have. And then I email them. And I was like, that is brilliant. Like, I was like, I need to steal that from you. I still talk, you know, with the gentleman to this day. And he was the one that said, you know, it was because you approached me with a question that wasn't everybody else. Cause of course he was sort of, bigger up. So we got the standard questions of, you know, like, how can you help me? Right? Like it was always that where I was like, I just want to know what the pocket thing's about. <laughs> That's the thing, man. People with strong networks already, you know, people with not so strong networks, oftentimes are going to gravitate to those people because they, you know, they need their resources, their advice or whatever it, it, the case may be. Um, and so hearing that he had a process like that, even if it's a very simple one, right, of, of just this whole left pocket, pocket, right pocket thing, um, lets me know that this whole hyper-local connections and, and, and trying to build connections thing is it's so hard, you know, and it can be so tricky. And one of the things that I, I think we need to do a better job at is just educating people on things like that, right? Just like little small practical tips and tools of, do's and don'ts when it comes to trying to connect with other people for the purpose of networking and building relationships is really what we should call it right because the other thing about networking is it sounds and feels so transactional yeah i like to build relationships with people you know i like to get to know you for a quick second store your information away and maybe we'll work together and maybe we won't but usually it comes back around months later, even a year later, sometimes, weeks, whatever. And I'm like, I met someone that can do this. And, I'm gonna, and I had a good conversation with them. They felt like a good person because it gets to a point where I'll work with someone just because they don't get on my nerves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I do. Be, it, you can have the best product or service. And I, when I meet you, I, I'm trying to get away from you because you may aggravate me by being too pushy or doing whatever the case may be. I just want to connect with like-minded people 
and, and I would much rather do business with good people, even if they don't exactly have everything that I need. Uh, and, and it always comes around in, in some way, form or fashion, right? Like, like I'm on your podcast today. You may be on my podcast, you know, a year from now, who knows, whatever, or, or maybe we'll work on a project together. You just never know where, how things will evolve and grow. Uh, and I, I think you can't be too thirsty to make it happen right then and there and for it to be too transactional uh, because you'll end up going in the left pocket. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, like you're, you're, you're And I think that that's, that's true. Like, I think, you know, when you were talking about that, it just reminded me of like, even being at events and those people that came to me that almost gave me that feeling like they had like a contract in hand and they were like, Hey, want to sign? Like, and I was like, yeah. just back up, yeah. like, just yeah. buy a girl, yeah. buy a girl a meal or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so I think sweet. you're true that it's so true that there's so many times that I, you know, that somebody has met me, but then come back, you know, months or even years later and said, I remember seeing you at this event or they would see me again and then it would register. And then yeah. all of a sudden that connection got made. So I think, yeah. I feel that you're, it's so true that, you know, when you're networking is to have that idea of, it's not about a sale right then and there. It's about yeah. building that relationship it's about building that rapport more than it is yeah, about trying it. to get a signature yeah right then and there and, and oftentimes what really happens is you'll you'll provide some sort of value or an opportunity for someone else and because they did that for you then later on you didn't even expect it they hook you up with something right you have a great conversation with them and then they think of you for an opportunity that they come across but if you have a poor initial interaction with someone, um, you know, bad impressions, right, or, 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 or lasting impressions, um, then, then they'll, they'll never even consider you for an opportunity, even if it's perfect for you. But, but if you just have really good interactions and not be so thirsty and not be so pushy or forceful when, when it comes to, you know, connecting with people, I think that people will think about you and they'll remember you for how you made them feel. And then they'll, they'll be more inclined to, to push opportunities your way, whether it's directly with them or, or, or through something else that they have, they have discovered. So that, that's what I found personally. Yeah. yeah. So when you originally came up with this idea, of course you mm -hmm. launched it and then talk a little bit about, about that oh, experience. I'm trying not to give too much yeah. of it away, but I did have a yeah. good laugh with that. <laughs> How I, I launched a business to improve in-person connections and then a, a pandemic decided to- And then the up. world went, nope, go inside. Yeah, <laughs> nope, everybody's at home. There is no outside, get back indoors. Um, that sucked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in short, it, it sucked. Um, and to expand on that and double click it is sucking a whole lot less now that the vaccine is here and people are feeling more comfortable and meetups and events are starting to, to resurface, um, warmer weather, all of those types of things. And so what it forced us to do though immediately is to make a decision to either give up on this mission or to figure out how we could provide value for people virtually um, and remotely. And what I think it's allowed us to do is even though we thought it would kill us and it still may, who knows? You know, when, when you're a startup, you're always almost about to go out of business. So that's just what that is. You insert a pandemic and that becomes even harder. But what we immediately started to do was just talk to event organizers, people who were in coffee shops and co-working spaces, asking them how, if anything, we could still provide value to them during this time and what they were doing, what they were needing. And then also talking to our users and try to ask them what, what they needed and what they desire. Because statistically speaking, um, growth of networks has declined by 17% since the pandemic, right? Uh, because we're flying less, we're not going to the networking events, we can't, it's harder to grow our networks. Um, so that's on a decline. And so what we started to do is start listing these virtual communities on our space with different topics and conversations for people to be able to check in and engage with each other to bring those like-minded people. We use what's in your profile to connect you with other people inside the community. So we have this thing called daily leads. Um, 
I've been stalking you and I know you have our app. I did. I downloaded it and then I was I've been playing on it. Yep. And and I and you probably got a daily lead today too. I did. Uh, I got a little message that was like, yep. you have connections. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and so we're trying to do stuff like that to 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 allow people to bridge the gap and still grow their network and and meet people based on the things that they're looking for. Um and I, I think that it's gonna serve us well because we get to do what we were set out to do initially, right? Help with the in-person, but then we strengthen this, this muscle that we never planned on even, you know, addressing um, with, the, with the virtual and the remote kind of connections. And, and, and now we get a chance to blend those together and see, and see what the product has, has for us. So that, that's, that's kind of what we've gone through, but man, it was hard. I, I'm not I, like I, I'm being light about it, but there was days where it got really, really dark for me as a founder, as a leader, not knowing uh, which direction to go. You know, as as the quarterback, teams like, all right, what's the play? What are we doing here? We're like, what, you know, what, what what's the deal? Uh, and when you don't know that feeling, it's like a this powerless feeling. Uh, that you have it, it's hard to it's hard to describe it's hard to explain and I don't like the bs people and so some sometimes I would just have to be like give me just give me some time guys <laughs> just get like give me, you're like let me let me let me let me let me let me do some research let me do you know what I mean um because I didn't want to lead us into the wrong direction and, and we made some mistakes along the way just trying to pick up opportunities you know what I mean that that didn't necessarily fit our vibe uh, but now, now, now we're back, and and I'm more optimistic about things, and, and and I think people are really rooting for us to win and solve this problem. Well, and I think that there's a lot of people that you know. Um, I always find the term introvert really funny of of a term myself because a lot of people who say that they're introverts, as soon as you get them out there, all of a sudden you're like. Yeah, nah, you're a superstar. <laughs> like yeah, you're just, yeah, exactly. they just they exactly. almost need that little push, right? But as yeah. soon as as soon as somebody sort of flicks their switch and asks them a question, that's it. Like they just go off and yeah. they're there to you know to sort of help everybody. So I think this is a such a good opportunity for people to kind of get their feet wet in that and, yeah. and get used to it again. Because I think it's I mean it's been yeah. a long time that we've kind of. Ha, you know, have been dealing with stuff from a virtual perspective that I think it's going to take time for everybody to learn almost how to talk to each other in person again. Yeah. Like, like shy doesn't mean incapable. Yeah. Right. Um, we all have tremendous talents. Some of us are just a little bit more um, forthright than others. Right. Which is fine. And it's so funny when we were doing our market research before we launched, I used to go to co-working spaces and I would feed their members lunch and ask them to test my uh, test out my app. And on play site, as you know, um, there, there are no profile pictures. We yes. use avatars instead. Um, so there's a bit of anonymity to our platform. And that was a hit for the more introverted people uh, or people who just, who would describe themselves as introverts. And, um, I'll never forget somebody who was like, I'm introverted. And so this is perfect for me because I know the value of networking, but it's hard putting myself out there. And because everybody has opted in, it makes me feel more comfortable doing so. Uh, and, and I think that that's something that we really want to lean into. Um, combating unconscious bias. Me as a, a black man running a tech company with tattoos and long beard and all this other wild stuff. I don't look like the typical tech founder CEO on paper right um, but I still want to be taken seriously just like the introverts who may not be as talkative but are still very capable and and I, I, I my hope is that if we're successful we, we've evened the playing field or leveled the playing field for everybody to be able to have access um, and be able to um, use their human capital uh, to be able to uh, achieve whatever goals and aspirations that they have so that, that, that's, that's my hope. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. And I think that, that, that was one thing that I, I as well liked because I find even myself, um, mm. you know, I'm a very visual person. So sometimes I'll make that snap decision, right? You see a picture, you see a logo or something, a snap decision happens. 
Um, and I have to stop myself consciously and go read a little bit more, like don't judge a book by its cover kind of thing. And I think this just takes that temptation of doing that away. It takes temptation away. It takes yeah. the temptation away. Because yeah, you, you do, you have to read more into it because you're just seeing like, you're like, I don't know. You're, for, you're, you're forced, forced to do it. And that's all right. And, and what I tell people like investors and all that kind of stuff when I'm pitching to them, like we're not trying to hide anybody from anyone. You can put your social handles, your Instagram, your Twitter, your bio, all of that stuff in there. But we just don't want that, that to be the snap judgment decision that you make on if you decide to connect with someone or not. Um, and I hope we're right. I hope that people start to learn more about people of different cultures and different communities and like that they, they're almost shocked or surprised that meaningful connections are happening for them for people that are in different cultures. Um, and maybe that starts to shift the way that they they now think about those things initially when they go out into the real world and, and look at people and, and start having those interactions. So um, there's a lot of behavioral change that we're after. Yeah. You had said something in one of your videos and you just reminded me of it now when you were talking about you, you like to be around those people that don't look like you or don't do the same things as you. Talk a little bit about that because I think that was a really key mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. You're probably, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was like, I know, two I years that ago, way. that video went out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, 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 that sounds like, yeah, something I would say, because I, I, <laughs> I for sure believe that. And I just, I don't think that I'll be able to reach my full potential if everybody that's around me has the same skills, has the same ambitions. Has, like, I, I like to diversify my audience. Um, one of my friends, one of my, one of my brothers, I, I call my close friends my brothers. He he jokes and he was like, "Your team looks like y'all are y'all represent the United Nations or something." <laughs> like <that. laughs> because like my my CEO is a white woman, my CFO is an Asian woman, my uh, my head of engineering is a white man, my head of finance is a black woman, um, and I just think that because that diversity of thought and people who who bring different experiences and different ideas to the table allows us to put the best product out that we can. But when you have everybody who, who sees the world the exact same way, you, you, can't, you can't maximize that, right? And while we want to connect people based on things that they have in common and, and, and things that are complementary, it doesn't do you any service to surround yourself with everybody that that sees everything the same way that you do. You miss something, you know, there's a big world that's out there. Um, and the moment you start thinking that you know everything and that your perspective is the only way, you failed already, even if yeah. you don't know it. Uh, and and I, I wanna be able to maximize potential. So I, I love surrounding myself with people who, you know, don't look like me, don't talk like me, don't, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. My dad used to always say that the second that you think that you're the smartest one in the room, you've then just become the dumbest. <laughs> and so that always just kind of that, that statement had always just stuck with me. And I remember him saying like, there's a lot of value in somebody who's uh, not quite at the same rung of the ladder as you. So you need to pay attention to those people. And I always remember that. And I always remember thinking, you know, there's times where, you know, you have to look down and, and look at those people that maybe you know, aren't as, you know, quote unquote successful as you are, aren't at, you know, right. at the, at the same point that you're at. Cause you just never know when all of a sudden now they're above you. Right. And there's a lot to learn from them because, you know, that, that struggle and that, you know, hustle that we were talking about, sometimes they have the lessons that are like brilliant, right? Like the, you know, yeah. I can't remember the quote that maybe it was Steve Jobs who said it or something. If you want to find the easiest way to do something, give it to the laziest person. Um, and I always thought that's brilliant because you're so true. <laughs> like you, we convolute stuff in our head and it has to be so complicated. And then all of a sudden you see someone else and you're like, well, how did you do that? And they were like, well, just, I just took out all the Yeah, crap. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got rid of all, all your bells and whistles and got straight to the point. And, yeah. Um, I really like what you just said because you just can't count people out. You know, um, me being black, that, that, White people are white, powerful people who make rules and stuff 
like have always or oftentimes have tried to like categorize the black community, whether they call us um, underrepresented or underserved or under this or under that, all these under words or whatever. Um, I like to call us underestimated, right? Um, because people have potential regardless of what they look like. And when you, when you underestimate people, you actually lose out. You are the one that's actually missing out on the greatness that you can leverage for your own value and for theirs. There's a, there could be a mutual benefit there. Um, and so I never count people out. I don't care what they look like, where they come from, uh, if they have a home or not, doesn't, doesn't matter. People have so many unique experiences and, and things that they could share that could provide value uh, that could really help us. Uh, and if we're just willing to listen, and kind of rule out what they look like or you know their financial status or anything like that i think there's a lot of power in that and i think that that's a good point for everybody to you know to think about is that you know those different perspectives i think are are so important no matter what it is no matter what business you have i think because um the ideas are different and sometimes they're genius and it's just simply because that person came from a different place or was raised a different way or had different experiences. And I myself have even found that, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm struggling with something and I'm really fighting with it and it's just not working. And then somebody comes in and they're like, do this. And you're like, yeah, well, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, cause I've been there. Yeah, that, that problem that you're trying to solve, I've, I've faced it, I've solved it. I, I've seen it attacked a million different ways. and. I think that that's the thing that I really get excited about. I always root for the underdog. You know what I mean? Like, like, like that, that person who all they have is hustle and an idea, uh, but they just keep showing up. I root for those people. Um, I am one of those people. And I, I, I think that now that's kind of like my life's mission, right? To, to help, the, help the underdog who wants to help themselves uh, be able to to get connected to resources that that will improve their journey and then see what happens yeah uh, yeah it's a good story though i mean everybody like come on everybody everybody loves likes that. the underdog story right <laughs> everybody everybody wants rudy to freaking you know yeah <laughs> make the big play and win and all of that type of stuff um because there, there's a little bit of a Rudy and there's a little bit of an underdog in all of us. You know, if you have achieved any kind of success, most times you didn't, you didn't start from, you know, 95% of the way there. You know, you had to go through some type of whatever. And other, you know, some people's paths are harder than others. And some people are just expected to win uh, because of all of the, the resources and the positions that, that they're already in. And there, you know, nothing wrong with that. It is what it is. We play the cards we're dealt. Um, but I always root for the people that, that have crappy hands that get, that don't get dealt, you know, a good hand and see what they, they do with it and how they end up winning. Yeah. yeah. So if people are interested in learning more about you, cause I just feel like I could just chat with you for hours, but I know <laughs> we're friends. Yeah. We could, we could chop it up all day. I don't even know how long we're supposed to talk. We're just kind of, uh, it doesn't matter. I just usually let the conversations go, but I'm like, okay, I got to stop or it's going to be like a two hour interview. <laughs> Cause I just, I really, really feel that there's like so much that, you know, I just want to soak up all, all of the information. Um, one of the other things that you had mentioned in a video, uh, which I, I do want to touch on because I thought it was a really interesting perspective. You had talked, um, there was, I'll try to set it for you <laughs> again. You're probably like, I don't even know when this video <laughs> was. Cause people do that to me all the time. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. Like, and it's usually when it's something brilliant, right? Like you said this and it changed my life. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I said that, yeah. like, it yeah. sounds really smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember saying that, but... So you were, there was a room full of people and you were talking about, you asked everybody who was on Instagram and then you had asked them who the owner of Instagram was and nobody uh, could answer the question. And then you started talking about um, that with like technology and all of that stuff that we have to stop being a consumer. Do you yeah. remember that? I remember that. I was talking to a bunch of high school kids I was talking to high school kids in Detroit, young people, high school, young people in Detroit. And um, 
I knew that they all had an Instagram. I knew that they did. Every every hand in in that in that building went up. Um, and it's true. Like if 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 tech is wealth creation for now and the future, and it's unforeseen if it's ever gonna not be that way, right? And it's just getting bigger and faster and more powerful and and creating more billionaires um, next to overnight. It seems like sometimes, right? And we have got to figure out how to leverage technology for our own gains, people who don't typically think about it. And that's not to say everybody should learn to code or whatever the case may be, because I don't know how to code. I, you know, I'm a non-technical founder. But you need to get fascinated about the back end of tech, of, of what happens on the other side of the coin and not the consumer side and, and, and how things are being built and achieved because these brilliant ideas that we have and these hacks that we come up with for how we use these different products could, could spark innovation for your own things. Um, I wish, no, I don't, I was gonna lie. I was gonna say that I wish that the people that I grew up with, those side hustlers that were hustling, doing all, all the, you know, the stuff, I was gonna say I wish that they were all in tech and they were, you know, the, this person had an app, that person, you know, ran a tech business, and that person was a, you know, coder or whatever. I don't wish that. I, all of my experiences were unique for me. Um, but imagine where I would be if that were the case, right? Like, and I want that for the next generation of the underdogs, uh, people who don't typically think about technology and, and they think about different forms of hustling and, and entrepreneurship, different forms of entrepreneurship, et cetera. I really want them to be more fascinated about, about tech in, that, in, in those similar ways uh, and not just be ones that, that soak it up so much. So that, yeah, I, I stand by that. I do remember that one. I do remember that. Yeah. And for me, it was just like, it really made me think about those times where people think that, you know, their ideas is smaller, it's insignificant, mm. or what difference is it going to make? And mm. I remember feeling like that early on and my dad going, yeah, but who's the person who invented those little umbrellas for the drinks? And I was like, well, I don't know. And he goes, can you imagine how much money that guy makes? And I was like, and he goes, and how stupid is that? If you think about just that little tiny umbrella. If, if you like, wake up and be like, I'm going to start some umbrella straws <laughs> or, or whatever they're called. I don't even know what they're called. I don't know, but they're in a lot of drinks, right? They're but he was like, you know, you can't discount, you know, and I, I mean, the lesson really was is that you can't discount any idea because you just have no idea. Yeah, you got to let it, you got to let it play out. You can't sit yeah. on it and, and you, yeah, you got to, you got to, you got to feed it and, and, and see what happens. And you got to be curious about things. And I think that that curiosity is what I want. I want people to be more curious about solving problems with their ideas using technology. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's my hope. That's I love hope. that. Yeah. All right. So, so I don't keep you for hours on end. If people are interested in just more of you, where would they go? Where's the best place for them to go? Uh, they should ask you. No, just kidding. I mean, <laughs> um, I am on all of my social handles is the same as uh, I wrote the hustle, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of that. Um, you can also follow me on plain sight, just search plain sight CEO. If you download our app um, and yeah, that's, that's all of my things. So my hand. Perfect. Well, yeah. we'll make sure that we have the links to everywhere that people can find you on oh, our yeah. blog and then I'm going to add mine as well because I'm yeah. on plain sight too so I have to start yeah. following people because I'm right. I'm new at it but it yeah. was pretty it was pretty easy I gotta say yeah thank you thank you uh, <laughs> everybody tells us how beautiful our interface is so I I'd always take that as a compliment we just had a release today for bug fix we had a bug with the follower list actually so if you try to like see my follower list it will like crash um oh. we got an <laughs> update today so Get the update so your followers list doesn't crash. Um, follow me on Play Site. I'll follow you back too. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to playing with it a little bit more. Like I said, I downloaded it last night, but uh, yeah. it was pretty easy. Like it's, and that's that's my biggest thing with apps. Like make it good. easy for me to do. Yeah, good. <laughs> so, okay, good. We got one. Yeah. All right. Now we'll, we'll we'll try to keep we'll try to keep it going. And um, it's been uh, very fulfilling talking to you. This has Thank been you. a great yeah, conversation. You're very easy to talk to. You, you, you make this very seamless. Um, you ask good questions 
And so, yeah, let's, let's do it more. It was great. Uh, yeah. So, I would love that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure out another way to do it because we, we clearly wanted to talk to each other for <laughs> hours on end. So we'll, yeah, we'll figure out a way. We'll to have do a part it. two for sure. That's right. <laughs> The return. <laughs> the return. That sounds more official, right? <laughs> cool. I think I have a conversation crush on James Chapman. I got to tell you. Have you ever just met somebody and you sit there and go, God, I just want to sit here and talk about all the things. Just learn all the things about this person. Um, that's who James Chapman was for me. I, we even talked for half an hour to 40 minutes after the recording was done. He's just such an intriguing person that I do think we're going to have to have him back for a part two. And I've really been enjoying the app Plain Sight. So I encourage you all to head out, download it, look for me, look for James, and just start connecting with like-minded people. There's a lot now that things are starting to open up again. There's some in-person places that you can go, but you can still do it all virtually as well. So no matter where you are in the world, I encourage you to download it and try it out. For more ways that you can connect with James, you can also head to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca. Click on blogs on the left-hand side of the page. You will see this episode. Just scroll down and you will see all of the ways that you can connect with James, with I Wrote the Hustle, with Plain Sight, and all of that fun stuff. So no matter what you're doing today, whether you're networking with one or a hundred people, make sure you take time to have fun. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? 